NTP Software QFS is an enterprise-grade policy storage resource manager that allows you to control how end users are able to leverage storage. This product gives you the ability to apply policy across all of the disparate storage devices you may have across the enterprise that will control how much storage users and departments can use, as well as which types of files are allowed to be stored on the network. These policies have the granularity to manage the entire enterprise, or down to a very specific share for one individual on a particular storage device. Architecturally, this product is a real-time file system filter that will manage all of the IOs for a storage device as relates to the end users. In a Windows Server, direct attached or SAN attached storage, this product is installed on the device itself as a file system filter. In terms of managing NAS devices, like a NetApp Filer or an EMC VNX or any other device, we've integrated with the built-in interfaces with those systems to give real-time file management without being in-band and without causing any performance impact. As I open up the QFS Management Console, you'll see it looks like a normal sort of Windows management paradigm, where I have my tree view on the left-hand pane and my details view on the right-hand pane. My tree view gives me the ability to manage all of my enterprise storage, no matter what type of device I want to apply policy to, and I can apply those policies anywhere in this tree and have it then inherit down all the storage devices. So the great thing about this, especially in an enterprise with hundreds, maybe even thousands of devices, is I have the ability to create one policy that might manage all of my users for all of my storage devices. So the paradigm we'd like to follow is the least amount of policies to manage the most amount of storage or end users in an environment. Now the different types of policies that I have in this product, I have the ability to apply quota policies, whether soft or hard policies, and I'll show you some of the settings on those here in a couple minutes or file control policies where I have the ability to control where certain users copy certain files onto the network, what types of files are not allowed, as well as the ability to remove files based upon their attributes, whether it's age, owner, or size. Now, if we were to take a look at the quota policies, if I were to expand this here and see our disk quota policies, we can support all of your normal sort of resource management type policies, where I would have business shares, departmental shares, home directory policies, etc. For a second here, let's pick on this home directory policy of 500 meg. So if I were to go in and take a look at some of the settings here, we notice we have a sort of a standard quota tab where I have the ability to specify how much storage can a particular user or group of users have access to on the storage environment. And here I've set this at 500 meg. I also have the ability to say whether this is a hard policy or a soft policy. So you'll notice here I have deny right set at 100% of this. So I will stop the user at 100% of their storage. Now, I also did give this user an overdraft where they can have an extra amount of storage for a period of time. Maybe for 15 minutes, I'll give them the ability to copy up 10% more storage. Just a little bit more ancillary files they can copy up, but we still don't want them to abuse storage, so we're going to keep that overdraft. Now, if we did have parts of the environment where we didn't want to do hard quotas, we could do that as well just by unchecking this deny right at 100%. So now at this point, users can go over their quota limit. Maybe what we want to do is just notify them as they're using excessive amounts of space. Maybe I want to send them out an email and let them know that they're using excessive amounts of space and also give them a tool that helps them clean up their own storage, which our tool that does that is called Storage Investigator, and I'll show you that here as well in a moment. Now the Thresholds tab gives us the ability to send out any number of notifications we wish, either out to the end users or out to the storage administrators, as the users go above or come below these particular percentages. So here I could create a brand new one if I wanted to, and I could say it's something like, let's say, 99% of the user's home directory storage. I want to send an email out to that end user, so I could do that right here. Or if this was a business share, maybe I want to send an email to other recipients out to a point of contact who's going to manage this share in some way. I also even have the ability to execute threshold commands as the user comes above or below this particular percentage. So if I wanted to integrate with third-party applications, I could do that here as well. The directories that I want to manage is all of the different types of directory structures on the storage devices that I'm managing. So this could be NAS devices, this could be Windows servers, it doesn't matter. We can manage them all from this one policy. You'll notice on this directory structure what I've done is I've added a wildcard at the end of the structure. So we'll pick on this NetApp Filer volume for a second here. So vol, vol2, user star. So every end user home directory under there is now part of this policy. That wildcard automatically adds those users to this policy. Now if we provision a new user and put their home directory in that place on the filer, this user now automatically gets a policy. So this gives us the ability to do a default policy for home directories. 
Now, if we take a look here, and I were to cancel out of this policy for a second, we will notice that I do have multiple different sizes of policies for users' home directories. So we may have some users, maybe new users, who get the 250 meg policy, and then maybe as they use more and more storage, we can move them up into the higher levels as need be, or a project base if they need more storage. If we take a look, for example, at the 250 meg policy, you'll notice here it applies to that vol, vol2 user star. So every user home directory under there, even if it's 10, 15,000 directories, are all going to be a part of this 250 meg policy. If I go to my 500 meg policy, you'll notice it applies to the same exact area. And my 750 meg policy also applies to the same exact area. So I have three different levels of storage or quotas that I can move users to, and they're all a part of the same policies. So you may say, well, if I want to move a user to the 500 meg policy as opposed to the 250 or 750 meg, how do I do that? If I were to open up that 500 meg policy, one of the tabs that we have here is what we call the Managed Users and Groups tab. And here what we typically recommend, especially in larger enterprises, is you would associate an Active Directory security group with this policy. So in this case, what I've done is I've created a security group called Quota 500 meg. So any user in this group writing to their home directory is going to get a 500 meg quota. Now if I want to move that user into a higher quota group, that's great. I never have to come into this product to do that. I just go into Active Directory, find the user, move them out of the 500 meg group, and put them in the 750 meg group. Now they have a brand new quota. So that gives you the ability to manage all of your storage policies, which users, how much storage they have access to, as well as which types of files they can put on the storage system, all through Active Directory. You never have to come into the policies and manage them day to day. Now these policies also do have a lot of sophistication in the ability to exclude subdirectories, exclude certain groups of users that need be as well. So you'll find a lot of those tabs are used on all of the different types of policies we have to give the flexibility to manage an enterprise. Now, if I were to go into the next policy set, which is a file control policy, this policy is designed to manage which types of files users put and where on the storage system. So I'm just going to open up my media blocking one, and here I'm going to remove the presets, and we'll see what happens here. So if I wanted to click Add, I could select those presets again, saying I want to say block graphics files or audio files or something along those lines, or maybe I just want to type in a pattern. So here I might do star.mp3. So anybody who opens, copies, renames, deletes, does anything to MP3s on my storage environment, I know about it, and then I can do something about it. And maybe that's blocked, but it might not be. Now before we move on to those control options, what I do want to show you here at the bottom is we do have the ability to enable zip scanning and deep scanning. What zip scanning is, is if someone were to zip up, for example, their MP3 library, I would know about it, and I'd have the ability to block that zip. Or deep scanning, if someone were to rename their MP3s as Word documents, I could know that those files are actually MP3s by reading the header of the file, and I could then block those files as well. Now, if we go to Control Options, we see all of the different things that we can do when a user copies this type of file up or tries to access it on the storage. Here, I could maybe set the ability to read or allow read for MP3s that exist on the storage system today but not create any new ones. So this in this policy configuration, what I'm doing is I'm stemming the flow of new files to the storage system, but I'm allowing them to read some that exist there already. Or I could do a classic block all, where I don't have to allow them to do anything. Or I could just set this to all allow if I want to. I don't have to block users copying media files up. But maybe what I'd like to do is message them as soon as they do send that file up to their home directory. So here, for example, I might say a user copies up an MP3 and I instantly send them an email saying, hey, listen, uh, Mr. User, we see you just copied up uh, this particular MP3 up to your storage system and realize that the storage system is not for music files. Please remove it if it's not business related. If it is business related, maybe it belongs in another share. So we can redirect the users in a very soft manner as well. Now, I also have the ability to point this policy at any directory or group of subdirectories. It doesn't necessarily have to be the entire volume. So here, for example, coming back to that NetApp filer, maybe I only want to block user home directories. So every home directory that's under here, I'm starting to block MP3s for users copying them up. Now, I also don't have to block all users. Maybe what I want to do is only block certain users. Maybe I have an Active Directory security group of interns or contractors who shouldn't have these types of files. I can set that group as being managed by this policy and then just add users to that group to block them. Or I could do the antithesis and maybe restrict everyone from copying these files up and manage a group of users who are allowed. 
So here in this particular case, I have an Active Directory security group called Media VIPs. And in this case, I'm blocking everybody but users who are a member of this group. The last thing I want to show you here on control options would be the ability to switch the entire disposition of this policy. So here I might exclude these patterns. What this now means is I'm only able to copy MP3s up into the storage system that's the area that's specified, and I can't copy any other file type up. Now this may not make sense for MP3s, but there are all sorts of other file types that this may make sense for, like NSF files or PST files, or any other type of file that you want to make sure that the area that you've designated for that file type, and that's the only file type that's going to make it up there. The last policy set we have here is a file management policy, and what this is, is that it's an out-of-band policy that is designed to run at a particular time. In this particular case, this one's running at 2 a.m and it's looking for files that meet a particular criteria that's specified on this tab. So here, for example, I'm looking for all PSTs that haven't been modified in two years. Or maybe I don't care about that extension of the file. I just want to find all files that haven't been modified in, uh, let's say, three years that are larger than 100 meg in size. So now when I find files of this type, what do I want to do? I may want to audit the fact that they exist or just give you a list of those files, quarantine them, move them to a place users don't have access to, or delete those files straight from the storage system. No matter which of the three options I pick, I always have the ability through thresholds to specify what I want to notify based on these files. So I may say, you know what, 30 days before these files are three years old, Let's send an email out to other recipients. Maybe it's the storage administrators. I want to let them know which files we might be removing in the next 30 days. Or send it out to the owners of the files themselves. Hey, Mr. User, you have these five files you haven't touched in almost three years. If you don't need them anymore, please remove them. And this policy, like all the other policies, has the ability to be pointed at any directory. I could do it, this policy for any specific user or group of users, and I can exempt people from this policy as well. Now, as end users are notified by the system, I'll give you a view as to what that might look like. When an end user is blocked, either copying files up to a NAS device or up to a centralized Windows file system, what would that look like to the end user, and what tools do we give that end user to help clean up their own storage? So here, this particular user is a part of a 250 meg quota, so they're already almost at their limit on their home drive. So when they try and copy out more storage up to their home drive, what we're going to see is they instantly get blocked as there's not enough free disk space on the storage system. So here, now that user knows that they've already reached their limit on that particular area. We could have a real-time pop-up come from the QFS system that gives you a little bit more information about that particular block. Or we do also have the ability to send a real-time email notification out to the end user as well. Here in this email notification, we see that this particular user has reached 100% of their storage in that particular home directory. And this is all customizable as to what it says. So this is a sample HTML version of an email that comes with the product, but you can change this in any way as well. Now, if that user has no idea what this quota message means, we do have a help link here that the user can click on that will bring them to an HTML site that just explains what are quotas, what should they do next, and what are our corporate policies. This, yet again, is also all customizable as to what you might want to say to your end users. You could change all the look and feel to look like perhaps your local corporate intranet as opposed to looking like this. Now, we also do have a link at the bottom here that we want the end users to use as well, which gives them the ability to review and clean up their own storage. So when they click here, it brings them to a site that is an end user support infrastructure site where they can do one of two things. First, they could request more storage if you were to allow that. And I tell you, most of my customers actually have me remove this second option because it's too easy for the user to ask for more, of course. Why would they go clean up their own files if they didn't have to? Or you could have them run this storage investigator, which is typically where we want end users to be running. What this tool does is launches a web page that will actually go out and in real time scan the place the user just affected their storage. So this web page, which is a digitally signed ActiveX control, will actually open up, scan the user's area, and tell you exactly how much storage they're using. So straight from here, I as an end user can see here are my two largest files right at the top of the list. And if I wanted to, I could highlight any one of those and click delete. But I also do have the ability, I see that this particular second file here is located in a subdirectory called projects. So maybe what I want to do is expand and move into that projects directory. Or break down my entire home directory by extensions. 
Well, those, those two zip files are pretty large, but I do have a number of batch files that are almost the same size. So maybe I'll double click on batch files and only see those. Highlight any number of these as I want and just remove those straight from here as well. Now, as the end user, I do have the ability to use any one of these options at the top. What we typically recommend, this is entirely customizable for the audience. You might say, for my end users, I'm only going to show them the big files button here um, and maybe the big delete button and that's it. My storage administrators, maybe I want to give them all the options, the ability to export reports out of here or see which are the users using the most storage in that particular area. Now, my demonstration, this interface was predicated because of a quota breach. So we're helping an end user clean up their own storage. But it doesn't have to be, it's just a web page. So here I might want to give the department manager the ability to open up this web page anytime they want and have it scan their departmental area and tell them who the largest users are or how old their data is in that particular area and give them the ability to clean up. So you could use the tool that way as well. So this has been a brief description of NTP software's QFS and all of the policies as well as the end user tools that help you manage your unstructured data.